Now, if you're not just here to make a little bit of money, but you actually want to save this country as well, well, then you've probably already subscribed to this channel. You're probably already tuned in with us and know exactly where I'm about to go with this one. It's a whole heck of a lot bigger than XRP, than catching some gains on some Mickey Mouse coins. This is about restoring the gold standard of capital markets. God willing, we could restore the gold standard of currency as well. But on the other hand, we have an agenda. We have an enemy who wants the United States of America to be the gold standard of corruption. What are we talking about? Ethgate. And it's not just me talking about the damages and the amount of profit and how big of a scheme this is equating to over a trillion dollars. We're now going to get to hear it from Stephen Naryov himself, the Ethereum whistleblower who is going to be dropping a quote unquote revelation of a lifetime. That's what I'm here for. Not only are we going to make some money, don't get it twisted. We are going to be making some, and we already are. We already are doing really well, and we're going to continue to do better as this bull run is just getting started. I got another video dropping here later today talking about just how massive of a bull run this is going to be. And that's all great and fine and dandy. But if you're interested in saving this country as well, then this episode is for you. Let's get started right away, folks, by highlighting here that we have Tom Emmer. If you don't think that the Fed is pursuing a CBDC, think again. The Fed gave this to my staff during a presentation earlier this Congress. They view a CBDC as one of their key duties. And you can see right here. Currency, check collection, automated clearinghouse, wholesale payments, Fed wire, fund service, Fed wire security service, fiscal agents of the U.S. government, Fed now, central bank digital currency. And we all know that Fed now and the fastest payment network is all moving towards that CBDC reality, right? Instant settlement. And for all intents and purposes, we're already using central bank fiat notes. So let's not play around, right? If we're going to have the conversation, let's have it. And I'm all here for it. You know, like I said, we used to have the gold standard of currency. Now we have a fiat dollar that's only backed by the largest military known to man, which is considerable in it of itself. But we have to actually take a look here at the role of the Federal Reserve. Why are they even there? Have we ever had an audit? And the fact that if we don't stand up, they will push forward for a CBDC that may or may not have tools and capabilities that, uh, you know, isn't of the American way of life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness and just allowing the people to flourish and, and create prosperity for themselves. That's all we want. But I think that, you know, we do have too much doom and gloom around the CBDC and folks that want to get all worried about the dystopic CBDC future without realizing that the new world order is already here. We're using it, the fiat version right now. So what are we fighting against? Let's get clear about it and let's put up a resistance. And that's why I'm thankful that we're here in the United States of America where we still have somewhat of a rule of law. We have courts that are siding with the American people and shutting down and slapping down the SEC and other three-letter bureaucratic beast agencies. And so we're having major victories, but we got to keep up the fight. One more data point before I continue on speaking on that legal battlefield and exposing this corruption. We got some good news coming from Corium. The XRP Ledger Corium Bridge is now live for builders designed to leverage the distinct strengths of both platforms. The efficient payment protocol of the XRP Ledger and Corium's advanced capabilities with smart contracts and IBC interoperability. This is what we've been waiting for, folks. <clears throat> now, this is also going to have a little bit of a action partnership with Sologenic as well. 150 plus assets, including XRP and Solo, are ready for Cosmos exploration. Empowering builders and users alike with new liquidity, ecosystem growth, and extensive DeFi capabilities. So instead of building a platform for fraud like we got with Ethereum and the tens of thousands of ERC-20 tokens with no utility but just a scam uh, to sell you, we actually are building out real utility here in the XRP ledger in the surrounding ecosystem. And I include Flare, I include Zahao, I include Corium and Sologenic, right? That have kind of built their projects around and in proximity to the granddaddy of them all, which is the XRP ledger. Now, yesterday, I'm going to put the link on down below too. If you guys missed it, I just did a session with Rob Cunningham was the host and we had our special guest, Steven Narioff. We had Echo to Truth. One of our good friends from TikTok was on there, along with Maya and Chris from Fruition Films behind the XRP Unleashed documentary. And then, of course, our good friend Jimmy Valley was also present, along with yours truly. And we really just wanted to give Stephen an opportunity for him to share his uh, story. And this is just one of many um, you know, public interviews that Stephen's got coming up. 
Um, and, and so, you know, this is just the start of really unraveling this thing. I'm so glad that he's been featured in the XRP Unleashed documentary because this is what reaches out to the masses. This is what resonates with the population that's outside of the XRP community, outside of the cryptocurrency community. This reaches, you know, uh, Americans of both sides of the aisle, of, of every race, creed, and religion who just want a level playing field. This is who will be connected, you know, will be interested in this story. Not because, yeah, the, as I just mentioned, we're getting tech, we're getting the ecosystem going, and the tech's great. That's fantastic. God bless the builders. But what sells is a good old story of corruption. And boy, are we unraveling something here, folks. I'm going to drop the full interview. I streamed it on my Twitter as well. And so I'm going to drop the link for that down below in the description of this video. But uh, before I was able to go back and clip up some of the most important findings of it, you already know that our good friend and brother, Digital Asset Investor, was already on top of it. So he clipped up literally the three clips that I wanted to share with you guys, starting off with this one. There's a reason nobody will say the word ETH gate. Quote, when I start putting the pieces together in hindsight, you start to realize that something had been planned way in advance, and all of this was a pre-planned event, and I'm talking about Ethereum as a whole. This is Steven Nerioff speaking. And I retweeted this one out, and I said, yes, the pre-planned, you know, what was going on here was the hijacking of the capital markets in the United States. As I said, this is so much bigger than XRP. This is so much bigger than crypto. Just look at all the fraud IPOs that have been allowed to go through under Jay Clayton and now under Gary Gensler as well, right? And, and all this fraud that's been taking place under the nose of our regulators that are supposed to be there to defend us and protect us. And it's the complete opposite. And now it goes even further. <clears throat> as Digital Asset Investor says right here, now we have the SEC, CFTC, and the Federal Reserve working with Lubin. Remember that JP Morgan was there before public mainnet launch. And in this clip, you're going to see that Steven Arioff went with Joseph Lubin to go meet with the Federal Reserve sometime in late 2014 before or after Ethereum launch. We're going to have to go back and I'll have to ask Steven more details on this. We only had so much time with Steven. But listen in on this one, folks. Steven Arioff, Joseph Lubin meeting with the Federal Reserve as well. I wonder if they gave him a little note for him to put in his pocket. New pioneers of the new monetary system are taking this whole operation. So is that a fair summary? Yeah, that's that's very fair. And in fact, I'll add one more to that. Uh, <clears throat> the Joe came to me one day and said, we're going to meet the Federal Reserve. And so this was in late 2014. And I said, why are we meeting with the Federal Reserve? And they're like, what's the Federal Reserve? Why are they interested in what we're doing? Um, and, uh, you know, we met with the Federal Reserve and it was, you know, a nice polite meeting, um, but I, I uh, let's just say I got the feeling that, um, you know, when they said, uh, you know, you know, there's, uh, if there's somebody at the table, um, that's the one that's getting cheated and you don't know who it is, it's you, right? You know, so it's like, I wasn't in on it, uh, but it was clear that there was something else going on. At least that's how I felt. And it seems to be correct in hindsight. So not only do we have the CSC, uh, SEC signing off on it, CFTC, along with JP Morgan, we know that they were there from the very inception of this whole idea, but now we have the Federal Reserve included, okay? And then I'm going to let this one play because don't take it from me. Don't take it from me. Listen to Stephen Nerioff himself. We've talked about the damages to the XRP community. You got to understand that there's a couple different parts to this. There's a couple different calculations that need to be made. And we've highlighted how if you just do conservative assumptions and basic math, you can tell that XRP missed the last bull run because of this lawsuit. And, you know, we probably missed out on hundreds of billions of dollars worth of market cap. In fact, if we traded just like how we did with, uh, you know, similar to Bitcoin and Ethereum, right, XRP would have gone up and, and the market cap calculation is about 493 billion. I've already done it. If we had just gone to about $10 during that bull run with the circulating supply of XRP, our market cap would have been 493 billion. So we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars of unrealized gains of unrealized potential that the XRP community didn't get to have because of this lawsuit. But then the other side of this is how much they profited and you're going to listen to Steven Nerioff in this clip talk about how what Madoff and Enron did 
would have been rounding errors compared to what took place here with Ethereum. This is truly incredible, folks. The damages are massive, and he uses that word that starts with a T, okay? And I want you to watch Jimmy Valley and myself as we sh nod our heads, shake our heads, yes. And you can see the grin on my face when Steven Neryov confirms exactly what we've been talking about, folks. Take a listen. There's fraud, there's, you know, um, international cooperation, there's governments, there's private players. It's, it's so much is going on. I and mean, we can go into some of that. Um, it's, but in terms of size, you know, uh, it, you know, we talk about like Madoff or Enron or something, and those are like rounding errors compared to the, to the numbers that we're talking about here. Um, you know, I, I believe it's it's numbers that starts with a T, that, as in trillion, um, that has been fleeced from the public, uh, not just the American public, but the worldwide public. Um, and Ethereum was basically created, you know, for a few reasons, but one thing that they have used it for over the last 10 years is to, um, as a platform to, um, uh, initiate massive fraud on the public. You know, and there's so much confusion about this. We're not saying that ETHgate, I mean, ETHgate is part of suppressing XRP, absolutely. It was the direct actions against Ripple and the XRP community that really did the damages. But where they made the profit, where they made, as he said, you know, the word that starts with a T and somebody better fat, you know, somebody better check him. The Twitter police are going to be jumping all over this one. Steven Naryov, how dare you say, right, that we're talking about trillions. And this isn't damages. This is profit that they made based off of these actions. And so don't take it from me. Don't take it from Jimmy Valley. Now we're being vindicated by the Ethereum whistleblower himself. And you can all go look at it and, and verify it for yourself. The amount of uh, you know, wealth that's been created in this Ethereum ecosystem, and it's primarily gone to the top players that built this foundation of fraud, just like he said. And that's the problem, right? It's not that we're still sitting around here whining and complaining, oh, Ethereum's keeping XRP suppressed now. No, that's not it. It's just XRP was suppressed by the SEC suing Ripple and including all of the XRP community in that lawsuit saying the XRP in and of itself was a security, and now we've won that. We know that that is not true, and the law of the land of today is that XRP is not a security, right? But the damages that that caused to the XRP community worth hundreds of billions and maybe even more, maybe even more. Conservative assumptions, please remember that. Conservative assumptions, we're talking about hundreds of billions. But then the profit made on the backside and the profit that's still being made from Ethereum uh, in the free pass that they were given. And to bring this whole thing back home, to, to help folks understand why so much is at stake here and why we keep talking about this is because it's bigger than just making a little bit of money off of crypto. Okay, It's bigger than just the cryptocurrency space. This is about restoring capital markets. Remember, Gary Gensler wants to make the accreditation standard go to 10 million. Even if you have a million dollars net worth, he, he still thinks that you're not worthy of being able to invest and make your own decisions. Th this is insane. And if we don't put up a resistance, they will take away the opportunity that we had here in this great country. That's what this is about. And so it's very easy for people outside the U.S. to you know, tell us to just shit, sit down, shut up, and just take it. Why, why are you guys still complaining about ETHgate? Because we want to save our country. That's why. You know, you know quite an idea i know right and if you're wondering what's at stake and what they do to silence people that are talking about stuff that's way less than this type of fraud this is the greatest fraud probably ever you know attempted in financial market history and go look at what they just did to that boeing whistleblower i don't even want to talk on it really i really don't even want to talk but i got to mention it because folks think that this is just one big game the Boeing scandal is way smaller than what we're talking about here, folks. This is the entire financial system. And by the way, if you're outside the U.S. and you think that this same group of individuals that control our country through the private central bank doesn't have a central bank in your country, well, you better go check. You better go check yourself. You better go check your country because you probably got the same folks that got their tentacles stretched into your country as well. This is a worldwide problem. This is a worldwide crime syndicate. And I'm not going to speak on it much more than that, because as I mentioned, they, they put people away for a lot less than what we're exposing right here. 
<clears throat> as Stephen Naryoff says, are you ready for the revelation of a lifetime? The time has come, the truth has been revealed, and it is not what we expected when we first embarked on this journey. And he tags Boring Sleuth, Truth Labs, who has just been over the target, digging up and finding so much in this regard. Boring Sloth is a hero, and so are all of us who have fought to bring this massive corruption to light. Sound the alarms, prepare yourselves. In Truth Labs, Boring Sleuth says, I came across some information this week that was passed on to me, and I've now verified it. Within it ties together so much of what is broken in my country and most likely the rest of the world, as I was just saying. This is not just the U.S. problem. This is the whole entire world. Do you want to free humanity or not? Do you want to be on the right side of history or not? And it is so telling the people that won't say those words, Ethgate, that don't want to talk about this, that want to go play around chasing Mickey Mouse coins. These are the same people that are going to have their country and the opportunity taken from them right out from underneath them. They say, follow the money. We did. The missing piece of many conspiracies in the world may be joined together on the blockchain. This is the great work that Sleuth has done. And he, like he says, I obviously do not want to harm myself. I'm very happy. I love my family. And this is, this is exactly, as I was just saying, what's at stake here. And so this is why they have to be careful as we expose this. And after we got off the call, Stephen said some other stuff off camera uh, on what's coming up here soon. And he's not done. And this thing's just getting started. And we're about to make this go viral. And I just ask that you guys please help us out by making this message go viral. You can do so by liking this video, sharing this video. I'm going to drop in the description down below the full interview with Stephen Arioff. I'm going to, you know, hopefully we're going to see Stephen making some other appearances as well. I'm hoping to get him on my show as well for an exclusive. And we got to press forward here if we want to save humanity. This is not just about XRP. This is not just about crypto. This is not just an issue in the United States of America. This is a worldwide crime syndicate that we are attempting to bring down. And they take out people who are speaking on way less than what we are unraveling and uncovering right here. So if you guys appreciate what we're doing, you guys know what to do. Everything's at my website, ZachRector.com. God bless you all. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.